Alrighty, how's everybody doing today? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hope we're all having a fan freaking fantastic Sunday. I feel like this camera is normally not, uh... I don't know, man. I don't know. It's being weird. I feel like this, this camera, the small camera that I'm in, is normally a lot, uh... It's like wider, but I guess it's not. That's fine. Kono with the 12 consecutive months. Holy Hannah Banana. Can we get a bunch of wasps and arts in chat to welcome Kuno back to the wasp car. Thank you so very much, Kuno, for the 12 consecutive months. All of the freaking love, man. All of it. All of it. Don't leave the love lying around. Take it with you, Kuno. I really appreciate it, man. What's up, Curl? What's up, Captain Brass Balls? What's up, Gurr? What's up, Snake? What's up, Brain Sample? What's up, JFK? What's up, Crease? What's up, Snurfy? Snurfy Boo Boo? How's it going, everybody? What's up, Callie? How's everybody doing today? Hope we're all having a fantastic day. Kuno with a $30 tip on top of it, paying for my plate in advance. Listen, all right. I know you paid for your plates. Okay. I see that. I see that, Kuno. But, I mean... Listen, let me tell you something. I'm going to eat your plate for you, and I'm going to take that $30 and uh, and then make more spaghetti with it. Okay, I'm just I'm just laying it down how it's really going to happen. <laughs> What's up, uh, Killbug? Grr, with the 12 consecutive months as well. We better get even more wasps and hearts in chat to welcome Grr back to the wasp car. Thank you so very much for the 12 consecutive months. Thanks for helping keep the content alive. Thank you so very much for supporting the stream. All the freaking love, man. All of it. All of it. What's up, uh, what's up, Stealthy? How's it going? What's up, Scott? Kuno, straight up scammed. Straight up scammed out of this. Out of that 30 bucks. All right, so what are we doing today? We're making spaghetti sauce. We are going to be making a uh, spaghetti sauce using a slow cooker uh, is what I'm going to be using just for like convenience on my end, but you don't have to use a slow cooker at all. You could just use a normal pot. Uh, as far as like this, like I'm going to be slow, like cooking this on a simmer for a long period of time, probably like eight hours. You don't have to be slow cooking it for that long. But the longer that you, the longer that you like let it uh, simmer and like be on low, uh, kind of the more time your sauce is going to have to develop flavors and it's going to kind of, you know, come together really nice. But I would absolutely recommend no less than an hour. No less than an hour of uh, simmer time on this sauce. You already don't like the sauce. It has celery. You're not even going to know the celery's there, Scott. If I would have put the celery, you, you'd eat the sauce, you wouldn't even know that it was in there. Yeah, long simmered sauce is really good. It's gonna be, it's gonna be really good. I'm really happy with how the recipes come out, in the couple of times that I've made it. So, um, yeah, so we're we're gonna be using celery, uh, carrots, and one onion, and we're going to be using Italian sausage, um, just some freaking Bob Evans like Italian sausage. That's what we're gonna be using right there. Nothing super special. As far as that goes, you can use, I, I think the sausage goes really, really great with uh, spaghetti sauce, with a tomato sauce. So, like, if you're going to, you, you should use, like, whatever sausage that you like the most. So, if you have, like, this, like, spicy sausage that you just really enjoy, then freaking get it in there, man. It's going to be uh, really good. The main thing is just to, to begin to get it nice and browned and stuff like that, but we'll get to that part when we get to it. Crockpot still working okay for you? Yeah, Kuno, it's absolutely fantastic, man. I cannot uh, thank you enough for it, really. It's really a kick-ass, kick-ass tool, I tell ya. It's really, really kick-ass. Um, yeah, so the amount of time that we're going to be simmering this sauce, to be honest, you could just, like, uh, you could just, uh, uh, shave the carrots and then like put them whole or like in halves or something like that. But I'm gonna be I'm gonna be dicing up uh, quite finely both the carrots and the celery and and the onion too. But uh, the carrots we're gonna actually cook first uh, after the sausage um, and just cook them for a while because they are a root vegetable. They are like really kind of uh, they kind of hold they kind of hold up a little bit longer. So if you're just doing like an hour long simmer, they're still gonna have 
um, if you don't chop them quite finely, they're still going to have a bite to it. If you don't mind the bite of the carrot, that's fine. You don't have to put the carrot in if you don't want, but it sweetens up the sauce. We're also going to be adding some sugar into the sauce too, a little bit, just to cut down on the acidity. But uh, yeah, you like my pestle and mortar? Thanks. They're really, really nice. And we have some really awesome little bowls that uh, Curl got for me when he went to Turkey. It's really, really awesome, really beautiful things. And they fit just perfectly. I like it happened to get a. There's one year where I asked for a mortar and pestle. Um, for like I had said that I wanted one as a gift. So two different people got me a mortar and pestle. And since they were different, I just didn't. I didn't like return one or whatever. I just kept both of them. The electrical socket is uh, is shocked at the celery. It is well. It's shocked about everything. To be honest, it doesn't. It's 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 very easily impressed. All right. I'm just saying. Okay, so um, let's get the vegetables chopped up first. I'm going to go ahead and chop up the uh, carrots first. And uh, we'll uh, shave it up here. Like I said, uh, like once you, uh, once you skin the carrot, like if you're doing a really, really long simmer for the sauce, and if you, I don't know, like you could just throw them in there like whole basically, uh, if you wanted to, because it's going to be simmering for so long, but uh, I'm, I'm just going to chop them up fine, I like to add them into the sauce. All right. I've got this like bag for trash down here just to my right, so that way I don't get uh, too cluttered up on my workspace, because that will happen. Yeah. Like I said, this we're going to be using the slow cooker, but I mean, if you have a uh, just a, a nice thick pot to use, then that's definitely going to work just fine. It's like the one. There's a couple things like with doing a tomato sauce from uh, from what I've read in the, for especially for a really long uh, cook time on it. Like I'm going to be having it going for. If you are you like typically you probably want to use like a stainless steel pot, right? This is all the celery that I have left. It could actually stand to use more celery, to be honest. It's not not doing anything really super exact, exact here. We can, in fact, use another carrot, probably. We can stand to. I'll trim the ends off of the carrot. All right. So, like I said, I'm going to chop these carrots quite fine, and uh, they're a little bit too long for me to just start cutting in half that way. Just some of the skin. I don't think I need to use this anymore. Definitely stainless and not aluminum for tomato based. Yeah, oh yeah, so yeah, that's what I started to say. So, using a stainless steel would be, would be probably the best. Uh, apparently, uh, I, I've, I don't know, I've never, like, really noticed it, to be perfectly honest, but as far as, as far as, uh, using an aluminum pot goes for a long simmer, Harold with the 12 consecutive months, holy Hannah Banana, man, look at all these gold freaking, look at all these gold 1Ks and shafts, this is nuts, thank you so very much, Harold, for the 12 consecutive months, thanks for helping keep the content alive, thank you so very much for supporting the stream. I really appreciate it, man. So I'm just going to get uh, these carrots, like, I'm not really julienning them, but uh, sort of julienning, just kind of cutting them into, into strips so that way I can kind of chop them down nice and fine. Look at all those wops and hearts in chat. All of the freaking love, Harold, all right? All of it. Don't leave it lying around, man. I really appreciate the support. But uh, with aluminum, you can get some uh, funky tastes when using like a really acidic sauce, such as tomatoes, right? And also the other thing that I definitely have have seen with tomato sauces is uh, for a long simmer time, if you if you do a lot of sauces in it, it's gonna pit the bottom of your aluminum pan or your aluminum pot. It's so uh, you're gonna get uh, it's gonna just you know break down. You're gonna find like little like. Uh, pits in the bottom of your of your pot and stuff so it's going to break it down a little bit so it's nice to just uh, if you have a stainless steel pot use that or if you have a um, like a like a the Dutch oven something with like a ceramic coating on the inside I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm not saying aluminium all right so we're gonna if 
finely chopped these here carrots. And I'm going to get them put aside separately because I'm going to be cooking the carrots for longer than the um, than the onions and the celery because they don't really take uh, the onions and celery don't take long to break down. For the amount of time that I'm going to be cooking the sauce, you don't need to uh, you don't need to chop the carrots too fine. Like I could probably just leave them in pretty decent size or like not decent sized chunks, but I could probably just cut them into like little medallions. And they would uh, they'd be perfectly fine, they'd be all nice and tender. But uh, if you're doing an hour long simmer, you're going to want them chopped very fine. Probably finer than what I'm chopping them right now. And we're going to be sauteing the, like cooking them a little bit in the pan here um, after we do the sausage. And to be honest, we don't really need to do that for the amount of time that we're simmering. But again, if you're going to do it for an hour, then I'd definitely do that. We're also going to do it to kind of help uh, break up the fond in the bottom of the uh, stainless steel skillet that I'm going to be cooking the sausage in. So we'll saute the vegetables after that. So just doing a, like one, just always, is, I don't know, we always say it every time, anytime we're doing any kind of chopping, always whenever you're chopping, you don't, you don't lay your fingers flat on the cutting board, you make sure that you have your fingertips back and you can use your kind of knuckles to help guide down depending on what you're doing but uh, we're just kind of doing a nice little roll cut here moving our finger creeping our fingers back as we go you don't have your fingertips pushed out it's a good way to get a real nasty cut it's not that you can't get cut if you keep your fingertips back but if you do get a cut it's at least not going to be a really really nasty one right so that's the idea The whole point is to not get cut, but if you do, then that way it's not going to be a, a real nasty gayish, you know. Take about the half of the half of the rest of these. Don't think I've ever seen a carrot in a spaghetti sauce before. No, it's kind of like a sweetening thing. Uh, carrots are nice and sweet. And they kind of add a little bit more of like a full-bodied uh, flavor, I think. I don't know. You don't have to use carrots if you don't if you don't like them, but I use them in this one. If you used even more carrots, you could probably not even add sugar to the tomato sauce, to be honest. But I am going to add sugar to help cut the acidity down. I think that's kind of the main thing. All right, so there's all of our carrots. We're gonna get all of our stuff chopped before we move on to doing anything else. But um, I think I need to trim this celery just a little bit more. The celery is actually a little bit old, but it's quite crunchy because uh, I stored it in some water, like a little cup of water in the fridge, so it was uh, it stayed nice and crispy, even though it's uh, pretty old. So it's not slimy, it's still nice and crunchy, right? And uh, so if you have some soggy celery, get it in some water when it's in the fridge and it'll get nice and crispy. All right, these look, the rest of these look fine. Oh, that one, be trimmed. Ew, celery, celery's great in sauces. I don't, I wouldn't eat celery plainly it's just uh it's kind of too plain for me it's just like eating water crunchy water so we're going to get these into uh kind of thin strips a, a vaguely a, a vaguely a julienne not really but uh just into strips and then uh and then finally chop them One thing that uh, to note that I'm doing is like I'm not like when, I, when I'm doing like cuts like that I'm not like just lifting up and putting down the knife like I'm kind of doing like a, a forward back motion while we chop up and down. Celery just isn't your jam. Okay listen Scott 
I don't know how they do it in Australia, but if you're making jam out of celery, that's a whole different. That don't don't do that. All right. Look. I know it's a little bit. I know it's a little bit upside down over there, but if you're making jam out of chili, I think you're doing or jam out of celery. I think you're doing it wrong. What's up, Max? How you doing today? Crunchy jam, yeah, no kidding, Brain. You're not kidding. All right. I think I'm at the point right now I can probably go ahead and turn the heat on the stove. I'm just going to be turning it. Uh, this is a stainless steel pan that I'm going to be using. And uh, it has a, it's not like a super crazy expensive one or anything like that. It just has a, a, press, a press formed aluminum sheet on the bottom to help. Uh, you know, spread the heat out nice and evenly across the pan. It's not a full clad. It doesn't go all the way up the sides. It's not like super crazy great or anything. It's pretty good though. It, it gets the job done. But uh, the aluminum is quite thick. So if you if you're used to using like a just like a non-stick pan or whatever, then you go to start using like a stainless steel with like a thick aluminum bottom. You're gonna like burn the bejesus out of just about anything that you put into it because you're gonna be using it, you're gonna be actually like probably used to turning the heat up higher, and uh, this is gonna like completely demolish uh, even like if you like put in an oil, you're just gonna be like, oh shit, that's burning kind of a thing. So I'm gonna kind of turn it to a medium low right now. But kind of the whole point of us using the uh, stainless steel pan here is going to be to. Uh, actually have the, the sausage like stick to the bottom of, of the pan and that's kind of like what you want when you're using a stainless steel pan and uh, that's gonna that's all that uh, fond that develops on the bottom of the pan adds a lot of flavor so this is going to be good it's a good thing what's up Jenna Brake how you doing today you picked up a cast iron frying pan the other day Billy it's so good nice yeah cast iron is really really nice once you get that uh, that kind of layer formed on it so it's going to be nice and non-stick and then you just don't don't scrub it with soap or anything like that yeah you're going to be in pretty great shape and have a really nice utensil what's up Koopa thanks man all right we're going to chop these a little bit smaller it doesn't really have to be but I'm just going to yeah, anybody else notice the Twitch Creative Apron? Yeah, we got that Twitch Creative Apron uh, when we did that, uh, when we took part in that uh, charity stream, when we did the jambalaya. Pretty freaking fancy. want to get uh, what are you making uh, and are you a chef or something no Max I'm not a chef uh, I just used to work in a restaurant for uh, I worked in a restaurant for 10 years not uh, not a professional chef or anything like that just a cook and I enjoy doing these cooking streams so certainly doing the cooking streams has, has uh, gotten me a lot more experience than I would have ever gotten just on my own as far as like doing different dishes and trying different things goes but it's really fun and I have a lot of fun cooking already, so anything I can do to get anybody else interested in, uh, in cooking is just awesome for me, you know? You know what I mean? How does working in a kitchen not make you a chef, though? Cook does not equal a chef. Well, a chef is like, has some formal training. I, I, that would be my distinction of it. But, uh, I mean, they're also, also kind of like a, you know, it, it kind of depends, you know, on, on like, on, on who you ask and uh, what their opinion of themselves is and and how, how much official like formal training they have as far as as far as that stuff goes but uh, yeah alright so we have the celery chopped up in there now we're going to chop the onion once we're done with the onion then uh, we can actually start cooking up the sausage so just got a, a large uh, Spanish onion here
chop off, I'm gonna chop off both the ends. I could, like, I'm just gonna do a score in the side of it here, and then, uh, and then just peel off the skin. You could chop it in half. I'm going to chop it in half anyway. I just, like, I, I feel like whenever I chop it in half, like, it ends up getting more of the, like, flaky outer skin everywhere, so that's why I do it like this, so it all kind of comes off in one bunch for the most part. Some of it kind of comes off, but anyway, let's get that in the trash. I'm going to get a little piece of paper towel. It's not too big of a deal, I just don't want to get any of those, those dried skin bits in there. Don't want them. Grandmaster Chef. Grandmaster Chef Failstar. See, this is what happens. This is what happens with Failstar. As soon as Failstar, it like, Failstar considered himself a cook his whole life. But then, he was playing Battlegrounds one day, and he killed Summit. He got Summit? He got him. He's 1-0. Undefeated versus Summit. And uh, Failstar officially. Grandmaster Chef. That's all it takes. Grandmaster title, just out of nowhere. All right, so with an onion, we're going to be uh, kind of using our our knuckle to guide uh, the knife down. So we're going to be just use like just using like this, and our finger is going to be back, and we're using the knife to guide down. And we're going to do. You can see I'm not chopping all the way through the onion. I'm only going about like 80% of the way through. We're using our knuckle to guide it down. So we get some nice thin slices in there. Right? And then uh, I'm going to do one horizontal cut here. You could do multiple or you could not do them at all. It's really not that necessary. It just gives you a little bit more of a fine chop. Kind of angling the knife down, not up, so that way if I do slip, it slips through the onion and like towards the cutting board, not up and into my hand, you know? And then just chopping it down like that. Once we get to the back end of it, lay it flat and then just finish it off like that. And then we have the little uh, root end here that we will leave and throw in the garbage, straight to the garbage. And if you have any other like uh, chunks left, you can do a couple more slices down, but it's probably gonna be just fine like that. All right. This into that bowl with the celery. Do glasses prevent onion tears? No, the uh, the only thing this okay, listen, okay, have you ever have you ever seen Lawrence of Arabia and uh, and Mr. Potter asks Lawrence if uh, like how he does the trick with the putting the putting the the match stick out with his bare fingers? He says, What's the trick? He says, the trick, Mr. Potter, is not minding that it hurts. So it's just kind of like a thing that you just have to kind of get used to sometimes. But there's a couple things like having a sharp knife is really good, and um, just getting getting it done with is another thing. One horizontal cut and then top down it here. Got one. That's pretty. That's a pretty big onion. One large onion. I got a few uh, celery stalks, and um, and a couple of uh, kind of medium-sized carrots prepped up here. Get this into there. Walking into a sharp knife and a Lawrence of Arabia quote. Ten out of ten stream. Thanks, all dessert. What's up, gamer? How you doing, man? What is shaking? Purple check mark verification completes. 
Gamer Fitness, verified and confirmed, purple check mark. Can I get a verification on that, Failstar? Who are you cooking for? Uh, me and Curl. Confirmed and verified. All right, thank you, Failstar. I don't know how, I, I don't think that that's actually true. I, I think I've seen that, that exact video, Callie, but uh, I don't think that helps. But whatever, to each their own. All right, so I don't think I, I'm pretty much done shopping stuff. Verified, unconfirmed, oh my god. How do we know if that's even the real fail star? Hmm, that's true. Well, he does have a sword. It's not quite as good as a check mark, but uh, it's something at least. All right, that pan's pretty screaming hot. Yeah, it's actually probably a little too hot. No, I think it's probably fine. All right. Um, next up, I'm gonna get the sausage ready here. And just cut off the ends of the thing that it's in. Chop the side of it there. All right. Uh, one thing I do need to remember to get really quick is um, a wooden spoon. There it is. Wooden spoon uh, complete with uh, extra fork attachment. So, so that way when you're uh, when you're mixing stuff with the uh, wooden spoon around like that, you can also just kind of like get some get some food on the fork, you know? It's pretty bonus. Alright. Looks like there's something in there. There was something in there. I have no idea. Alright. There's one fancy wooden spoon. It's, yeah, with the fork attachment. I know. It's pretty, pretty, pretty nice. Primitive spork. <laughs> You're not kidding. Um, I guess there's one other thing that I could do, but no, we'll do that while the sausage is, is kind of browning and stuff. I'm going to move this stuff out of the way really quick. I'm just going to move it up here. And, um, yeah. Do I want to do this, the tomatoes first? I've got a little thing of uh, tomato, of uh, tomato puree or tomato paste. Um, yeah, I'll just, uh, yeah, you know what? I need to, I need an extra pair of gloves actually. I got some gloves over here. All right. So what I'm going to do is I, I'm just going to throw on some gloves. I have some extra gloves there. Those are going to be for when I crush the tomatoes. I'm going to crush them by hand. You don't have to, but it's kind of fun, so we're going to do that. Normally I wouldn't even bother wearing gloves as long as my hands are clean on the tomatoes, but uh, just to make it a little bit, a little bit more, uh, a little bit faster. Can't unsee all the hair. You got now. You all got hair in your food. All right, so. It's just, it's just an Italian sausage. You can use whatever kind of sausage you like. Uh, a spicier sausage, I think, would actually go pretty good. But I'm just going to break it up a little bit as I throw it into the pan. It doesn't have to be, like, perfect at all because we're going to be breaking it up more, and it's going to be kind of a, all completely broken up after we're done here. Yeah, this pan's a little bit... A little bit too hot. I kind of thought that might have been the case. It's gonna be all right though. Like the temperature is right on the stove. It's just uh, the aluminum bottom on this is like a little too thick. So it like kind of just keeps heating up. It keeps gathering heat keeps going and going and going. Yeah, we're going to be just fine now. All right. So yeah, you want this, this, you want this sticking to the bottom of the pan. That's actually pretty important for developing flavor. It's just a little bit too hot right off the bat, but it'll cool down right away. 
And we just want to keep breaking that sausage up to keep getting more, uh, more fond built up on the bottom of the pan. And we're going to keep doing this until we get it all, all brown. And just kind of matching it and moving it around constantly here. Alright, nice. And we're going to let that keep going for a little bit while we move this aside and start getting our tomatoes opened up. Alright. So we have two cans of San Marzano tomatoes. Uh, it's Italian sausage is what it is, Kelly. But like you can uh, use whatever your kind of favorite sausage is. I think Italian sausage goes pretty well with this. Uh, but if you want, if you have like a spicier kind of sausage, I think that would go even better, to be honest. So two cans of San Marzano tomatoes. These are pretty highly recommended across pretty much everywhere that I've ever seen as far as making a uh, a nice tomato sauce goes. And uh, my, my limited experience with them, they've been quite fantastic. They have a really nice flavor. And these tomatoes come like whole uh, in the can. And they come with uh, whole basil leaves frequently too. So I'm going to be kind of crushing up these tomatoes. Kind of scraping the bottom of the of the pan here while this is kind of cooking. Nice. That's looking really good. We're gonna let it go for a little bit longer because we want to get it nice and cooked. Get any bits of uh, brown in that we can because we want that flavor in the sauce. The sausage you can like. Um, I, I think for the way that we're doing it. Um, like you could dra you could drain the sausage if you're concerned about your sauce getting a little too greasy, but um, I think with this kind of sausage that I'm using, it doesn't really need to be drained. I think it's been working out just fine. What's up, Ashes? How you doing today, man? All right, so we'll get these tomatoes. Dumped into this. You don't have to crush them. But uh, like you can, well, you, you well you, you want to crush them, but you don't well, you don't have to do it by hand. You can just do it like in the pot. That's fine. All right, looking good. let that go for another minute while I just quick kind of crush up these tomatoes. Oh yeah, ashes. Oh, thanks. It's nice to have little, uh, oh, you mean like these, these little plates here. Okay. Yeah, they're really, really nice. It's nice to have like bowls and stuff like that so, so you can like make sure to uh, have all of your stuff kind of prepped and, and ready to go. If you end up kind of rushing one thing or too many things, I kind of rip my gloves, so like even though I put gloves on, I'm gonna have, have like a glove full of tomato sauce. I'm pretty sure. But yeah, just kind of hand crushing them here. They fall apart like really, really easy. You know, like this is a whole, whole one just, just completely breaks apart. Really, really easy to do. One thing is if you're squeezing, like <laughs> you're gonna, you can, you can make a mess pretty easy. Uh, just because you could just have tomato juice flying everywhere, but I think it's pretty. Uh, Pretty nice to do, and you can see there's actually like whole, whole basil leaves in there. I cook. That's the rumor. I don't know. Do you use ceramic pans? I don't own any ceramic pans, but uh, if you are using like a stainless steel, like uh, or I mean a, a, a cast iron pan, you'd want like a ceramic coating if you were going to be doing a tomato sauce in that, because it'll break down that uh, it'll break down that cast iron pan too. 
I think that's pretty good. I'm just going to call that good. Dive those hands right in there. That's right. You got to get the, the feel of the tomato sauce. All right. So if you were doing like if you were doing this in a stainless steel pot, then what I would recommend to do is you take this sausage and you put it in a container to the side. I'm actually going to be throwing it in the, in the slow cooker right now, which is sitting right over here. And so that way I can get start getting my vegetables going in this pan. But you'd want to take the sausage aside, so that way you get uh, that way you can start getting your uh, vegetables sautéed in there and kind of get them started uh, ahead of time. And then you can start to break up that nice pot on the bottom of the pan. So I'm going to dump that into the slow cooker. leave the heat on. We're going to get our carrots in there. I'm going to let the carrots go for a little while just because uh, like the amount of time that, I, that I'm going to be cooking this, which is probably going to be like eight hours, you probably don't, you don't really need to cook down the vegetables, but I want to break up the, I want to, I want to break up that fawn on the bottom of the pan and this is a decent time to do that. I'm going to throw just a little bit of oil, that sausage was kind of I kind of dumped out most of the oil, just a, not even a teaspoon of oil. And I also need some salt in there too. Watching your glove that mixture is something out of uh, Fear Factor. Oh my goodness. All right, so I'm going to throw a little bit of salt in there. It's going to help pull some of the moisture from the uh, carrots. We're going to put some salt in uh, with when we throw the onions and the celery in as well. We're going to just throw them up on top of this. One thing I do need to make sure to remember is I have my tomato paste here. And I also have, uh, I'm just using some chopped garlic. You could chop your own garlic. Um, for this particular, like for, for any kind of like sauce or stew, if I'm using garlic, I'm just going to use pre-chopped garlic. If I'm using something where a garlic is more of the focus of the dish, then I'll hand chop the garlic like we did when we made uh, uh, the aglio wheel lower uh, however he's hit. So that way that we did when we did that we uh, chopped the chopped the garlic by hand. I keep just throwing carrots everywhere. It's pretty ridiculous. Well, thank you, Baracken. Is there a reason why you don't uh, do the carrots first before the meat? Because I, I just, since I'm going to be doing all the vegetables all the same, like I'm just going to be doing it like this. Uh, just because I want to be breaking up the stuff from the meat and it just takes a little bit of time. I'm actually going to put a little bit of water in the pan after I'm done sauteing or doing the vegetables here. Like sauteing is more like you know, a little more of a high heat for a low period of time kind of thing, which is not really what we're doing. So I'm going to call that fine. I'm just going to throw in the uh, celery and the onions. And there's going to be a lot of moisture coming out of the celery and the onions. And we're going to be cooking this for quite a while until until like most of the moisture is completely gone out of these because they got a lot of moisture to give. And we're going to throw some more salt in here. And then uh, after these start getting cooked down pretty good, then we'll throw in our garlic and our tomato paste, and we'll mix all this up. So throwing a little bit of salt in here is going to uh, help pull more of the moisture out of the vegetables. Tomato, our tomatoes are all set to go, uh, but we're not going to throw them in until like I'm kind of doing it like if I were doing it in the stand in, the, in like a in like a pot. So like. Now, after we kind of worked up all the stuff and after those vegetables were chopped down, 
and we got the tomato paste added, the garlic added, and then we're going to throw some seasoning into, which I'll get to when we get to that part. But um, then after we throw, after we get all that mixed in, then we throw in the tomatoes, and then we throw in the meat, and then that's when the, the simmering starts. That's when the flavorization begins. So you can kind of see, like um, I don't know how well you can see it. See the kind of steam rising up from the pan, and uh, we want to let this go for a little bit. Like if you're looking in the pan, I don't know how well you can see it. Let me, uh, I'm gonna wait for a bit to get a little bit more of the liquid out of the vegetables so I can show you a little bit better. But um, you'll see like a bunch of uh, moisture in the pan, or like a decent bit of it. So like. In the pan right now, we got moisture kind of dripping along the sides of the vegetables here. You can see it kind of running down. And we're going to kind of do that. Uh, we're going to kind of cook this down until we don't have that anymore. That's what we're looking for. And you can see, like, you can kind of, like, you want to be scraping the bottom of the pan here. If you don't ever use stainless pans, or if you haven't before, then, um, like, they get stained, like, pretty much every time you use them. But uh, you can... You can uh, like get them nice and shiny. Uh, not, like soap and water and a scrubby isn't going to get them like super nice and shiny. But um, what you could do is you can use uh, Barkeeper's Friend. Um, is is like really great for shining stainless steel to get it back up. Once you get the liquid out of the celery, is there anything even left? It does add some really fantastic flavor, Scott. What's up, Pratash? How you doing today, man? Good to see you. Good to see you. How many meals is this? A lot. Um, so this is going to be enough for, like, if you're doing, like, pretty large heaping, uh, like, scoops of the sauce with noodles. Like, you could, uh, you could make, like, what, like, six to, or no, let's see, because... Normally it's like six and we have leftover, so probably like ten, ten bowls, something like that. Is that about right? Yeah, like about, about ten, ten uh, servings of spaghetti, I would say. I would say about ten servings with the, with the noodles, right? What, uh, what I used to, as, as a kid, what we would do at the how at uh, at my house growing up was we would do up a really large batch of spaghetti sauce, and so then we'd have spaghetti that evening, and then we'd always have a significant amount of leftover spaghetti sauce, and uh, make that into chili. I don't know. That's what. That's what. That's something that I always had growing up. It was just like okay, so it's, it's, it was always spaghetti, spaghetti followed by chili. And like maybe it added some more tomatoes and then like you know beans and stuff for the for the chili and uh, just like a little bit just add a little bit more to it and that's but that's I don't know so if you had if you had a bunch of leftovers and you didn't know what to do with it and you didn't want to have spaghetti you could make it into chili maybe it's not so traditional but at least it's something different so we're still getting a good bit of moisture out of them you can kind of see. Uh, moisture kind of running down along the pan, and again, I'm kind of scraping the bottom of the pan anytime I kind of go in there and I see anything that needs to be broken up. With 10 fine meals, remember you only make one fine meal at a time, and you can only carry one to the fridge at a time. Well, if they're already pre-stacked, though, then you can take 10 at a time, Kelly. So it's not it it, it depends on how 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 quickly they're they're getting done. Right. If they're all done at the same time, all ten meals, then uh, then the, then you can carry them all at the same time. Watching this being out of vegetables on a Sunday with closed doors feels bad, man. I'm sorry, Kelly. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, one nice, really nice thing about this is like. Like the really the expensive part is one of it's there's a couple things that are well expensive like like the San Marzano tomatoes are quite expensive 
and of course the sausage is going to be kind of expensive as well. Like, like there are the sand. If you're getting like a normal canned tomato, it's not going to be too much. Like it's probably going to be like a a buck and a half, right? For a uh, for a can of tomatoes. But if you're getting the San Marzano tomatoes, they're pretty premium priced, so they're probably going to be like three bucks a can. Pretty expensive. So we're kind of getting to the point now where we're not getting any of that liquid running off. So kind of looking in the pan there, not getting like running liquid across uh, when I like kind of scrape it up to the side there. So I'm going to go ahead and throw uh, um, about a teaspoon of garlic in, or thereabouts, maybe a little bit more than that. This is a teaspoon, but I think I'm probably putting closer to a tablespoon in there. And we're just going to let that go for just a little bit. It doesn't have to go for too long. I just kind of want to get start to like get a little bit uh, the fragrance out of that garlic. That's about it. I go for like a uh, just about a minute. Okay, looking really nice. I'm gonna go ahead and grab some seasonings out here. I'm looking for oregano and basil, and then I'm gonna be getting some uh, crushed red pepper as well. I can put this garlic back. Also going to be using some sugar as well. What's up, sorry, how you doing today? Smells good, I uh, know. So good. Alright, so now I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of uh, of tomato paste, and that's just kind of the, a couple things. Like you could just throw it in and then and then mix it into the sauce, but I mean it's kind of like it's quite thick, so then you're gonna have, you're gonna have to like kind of work at it a while to get it really mixed in. So if you do it at this stage, then uh, you just have to work it into this, and then it's gonna just kind of evenly distribute. What's up, Ben? How you doing today, man? All right, so we're gonna mix in, mix this in. Tomato paste. Get it all nice and incorporated. Yeah, so like I said, if you just throw the tomato puree into the sauce, like that's fine, but it kind of, it's kind of like adding anything like really thick into like a bit of a thinner sauce, then you're going to have to kind of like really just kind of fish around with the spoon to kind of like figure out, okay, there it is, just like and like have to break it up. So I think this makes it a little bit easier. I'll turn the heat off right now. Got pretty much all the moisture worked out of this bad boy. Looking really nice. Alright, so I'm going to take this whole vegetable amalgamation and get it into the crock pot. If you were in your, if you were doing this in a pot, this would be the point where you can add in the, uh, like, add in the tomato. Uh, add in the tomatoes and the sausage, but I'm just going to add this into my slow cooker here. I'll get that over where you guys can see it in just a second. I'm just going to kind of scrape that out as best I can. I'm going to use a little bit of water in this pan as well to help make sure I get all the all, all of it out of it because I want to add just a a little bit, not even like a half a cup of water. Um, 
but just a little bit of water to it anyway. So this way I can make sure that it's, uh, I'm going to be getting all this out of the pan, right? So I'm just going to add a little bit of water, uh, a little bit more actually. I'm going to actually put the heat back on just to make sure that I can work all this up real nice. Yeah, we were actually talking about uh, about getting the uh, like some effect on another emote that I haven't actually updated, so that uh, they can kind of uh, stand out a little bit more and look a little bit cleaner. Scott. Yeah, I don't know. It turns out okay on dark mode, but it's always nice to just kind of get it looking a little bit nicer. I think. Yeah, all the new emotes were done by On The Loose, and he's done a really fantastic job. Alright, so it's looking just fine. I'm going to turn the heat off, and then just dump this into my crack of pet. Okay, so, now, I'm going to put this pan... I'm going to leave the pan on the stove, because that's still going to be hot, like I don't want to set anything on it, right? And then we'll get this moved over so that you can see it. So in the crock pot, we have our sausage, our Italian sausage. We have our onions, celery, carrots, tomato paste, a little bit of salt in there. We're going to be adding more salt. I'm going to throw in the tomatoes first, though. And uh, tomatoes really kind of want to splash pretty bad, so I just kind of like keep my hand on the one side where we're pouring. Slowly pour it in there. seasonings. And I'm going to go ahead and give this a nice big stir and incorporate it all. Any tips on making super great emails? I have an example of my mastery. Yeah, it's really, really fantastic, Scott. I know, it's so beautiful. I mean, I didn't really want to, I didn't really want to show loose the emotes that you made because I figured he'd just be kind of, wouldn't even be motivated to make any. Why make an emote when there's something like that out there, you know? All right. So uh, I'm going to be adding another uh, big uh, pinch of salt here. A couple, anyway. And some pepper. This pepper grinder is actually pretty low on pepper. Just kind of desperately trying to get anything out of that, actually. And then I'm going to be using about like a, a tablespoon of oregano and basil. Just going to eyeball it. So, tablespoon. I actually have a measuring table, a tablespoon right, right next to me, but I'm just going to eyeball this anyway. Tablespoon. <laughs> it's really some sort of Italian? I am not. I am not. And then uh, about a half a tablespoon of uh, crushed red peppers, maybe a little bit less than that. Uh, and I don't think it makes it overpoweringly spicy at all. I'm going to add a little bit more. It's just going to kind of be a nice development of flavor. Uh, you could add uh, fresh parsley in at this stage as well. I'm going to also be adding uh, three tablespoons of, uh, of sugar into this. That's going to cut down on the acidity, which the carrots are already helping doing. But um, 
this will help even more. So three tablespoons of the sugar. There we go. Any chili going in there? Nope, no chilies. No chilies. And we'll get that nice and incorporated. Now this is uh, this is the cook point, right? This is where we want to be cooking it low and slow for a long period of time. And like I said, you don't have to use a slow cooker. I'm just using a slow cooker because it's what's easy for me. You can just use a normal uh, normal pot, uh, and that, that way you just kind of use one pot and you don't have to dirty multiple things, or as many things, certainly. But um, I don't know, the slow cooker has been really kick ass and I've really been enjoying using it for sure. So I'm just going to give it a nice big mix, make sure all those spices that I just dumped in there are all nice and incorporated. Yeah, this is a Hamilton Beach programmable uh, slow cooker. I've really liked it quite a bit, Game Insor. It's worked really fantastic. It was one that I had on the, on my wish list on Amazon, and Kuno was super freaking awesome, and uh, and got that. Do you reckon you could spare most of the sugar if you made it from uh, live um, ripe sweet tomatoes? If you did it from if you did them from your garden. I mean, to be honest, you don't have to use the sh any sugar, especially when you're using carrots. But I still think that it's not anything about the tomatoes being like, like bitter or anything needed to be sweetened up. It's not like about making it like really sugary. It's about cutting down on the acidity. And just tomatoes are just acidic, right? So I think it's kind of like if you have a tomato sauce that's just like kind of like has like a hard bite to it, kind of like just it's like really like you feel it kind of feel like like in the back uh, in the back of your mouth or whatever because it's like a little too acidic that's kind of like uh, the reason that we're adding the sugar to kind of cut down on, on that like bit of, a, of effect on it you know always add uh, brown sugar to your red sauces to cut the acidity well there you go that's definitely uh, something you could try and do it absolutely all right so we're gonna call that freaking good and we are I am personally going to let this go on low in this slow cooker for eight hours um, and um, I but I would you don't have you don't have to do it for eight hours but I would say at least do it for an hour if you only do it for a half an hour it's gonna taste fine it's not gonna be bad but you're not gonna kind of it's not gonna be as good right you're just you're just missing out is what you're missing out on thank you memory yeah we're just wrapping it up so let's go over what we did uh, really quick. I'm going to go ahead and, and plug this thing in and get it going right now. There's a delay between the sound and video. Is there really? Oh, you know what? I think I know why. I think I know why. It's because the camera is always... It, yeah, I, I, know, I think I know why. Yeah, shoot. I didn't, I didn't think of it, because normally I always have to do a delay on my audio, but, but yeah, if you're using the carrots, you really want to have it simmer for a long time, but he used to add carrots and celery too, but your husband said it was, uh, that was wrong. Well, he's wrong. All right, I say it's right, and Billy knows I don't really know. Don't. I'm not trying to start an argument. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn uh, this on really quick, and we're going to set this to 8 hours, and we're going to have it be on low for that time, and there it goes, bam, done. And after it's done hitting for the 8 hours, it's just going to turn it down to warm. But yeah, so what do we do? We, um, we did um, celery, carrots. Um, an onion, and we had garlic, and we did Italian sausage. So we uh, chopped up all the vegetables, we prepped them, we did the sausage in a stainless steel pan, making sure to get some nice uh, browning on the pan, and then we did the, the vegetables in that same pan afterwards to make sure to break up uh, all that fun in the bottom of the pan, just to really, it adds like a tremendous amount of flavor. Like if you try it without and then with, you're going to notice it 
and uh, after we did that, we added, after we had the vegetables that had been cooking for a bit, so we, then we threw in the garlic, and then we added the tomato puree, or to, the tomato paste, which uh, is just there to like kind of help thicken up the sauce a little bit, and we had uh, a tablespoon of oregano, basil, uh, about a half a tablespoon of crushed red pepper, and three tablespoons of sugar. That's what I did. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, it's pretty, pretty basic. Um, you don't have to add meat. I would definitely recommend adding meat. Uh, we did a test cook of it without meat, and uh, it was fine, but it was just like, it was missing a little something, anyway. And uh, to be honest, like, if uh, I would, I definitely would not mind trying this with a, like, uh, with multiple different kinds of, like, spicy kind of Italian sausage. I think that would go quite well with it. And also, I mean, you could, you could really sweeten up the sauce um, if you wanted to. Or you could go with a more spicy route or whatever, you know. Feel free to experiment. This is, uh, this is pretty basic. I mean, I didn't add a whole lot of different uh, of, uh, seasonings into it or anything like that. Salt, pepper. Uh, oregano, basil, and some crushed red peppers, pretty basic stuff. So get crazy with it. Get crazy with it. All right? Cool. So, yeah. No FTL today. It's just a cook stream today, uh, pizza. Just a cook stream. Anytime we're doing a cook stream, um, we are just doing that, and then that way I get the rest of the day off. Because it takes, like, a, like, about an hour to, like, break down and then reset back up everything so it's always like absolute fucking chaos anytime I try and do that so I figure, figure just this way anytime I do a cook stream it's not really getting a day off but I get part of a day off anyway <laughs> yeah do you eat over spaghetti? yes yes this is eaten over spaghetti yeah mm -hmm. that's what we specifically made it for for sure. So yeah, use a bit, a uh, bit more meat personally, and I sauté the meat with plum wine for a bit of uh, subtle sweet. Yeah, if you like, I like I said, like at the at the very end, especially like you could actually just in order, like instead of doing the vegetables in to break up the the fond the bottom of the pan, you could just use um, a wine, like whatever wine, like a red wine that you enjoy, something nice and sweet. That would definitely be awesome to do. Um, I just use water, like at the end, just. Like I said, quite basic and uh, nice and easy to do. So, yeah, I hope you all had a good time. You know, not too bad. Got a, got a spaghetti sauce banged out in about an hour there. Not, not too shabby at all. So I hope you all enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Enjoy the rest of uh, your afternoon, your evening. All right? Sleep well. Have a good day tomorrow. I will be back tomorrow at um, maybe we'll do an early stream start tomorrow. I, I'm not sure. Um, but I know one thing that we're not playing Subnautica tomorrow. I'm done, I'm done with that game for a little while. That was a, quite a terrifying experience. That's for darn sure. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I was thinking about uh, picking up Hollow Knight and then uh, us giving that a shot. So maybe we do a playthrough on that. That'll take us, I'm sure, a few days. So either way, enjoy the rest of your evening. Sleep well or afternoon it's, or morning even, right? Uh, we'll see you all next time, all right? All the freaking love, everybody. We'll catch you later. Game as or T-Fury and Action, and Kratosh, and Kuno, and Scott, and Fred, and Brain Sample, and Aiden, and Kuno, I said, and, and everybody. Have a great freaking evening. Let's catch you later, Callie, and Fred. Everybody, have a great one, all right? All the freaking love, everybody. Catch you later. Peace.